Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Sudarshan Tiwari. I am from uh, Germany, from uh, RPTU, Kaiser Lauten Landau, Kaiser Lauten. I give some series of lecture on the, the title, uh, I, is my lectures or my course is uh, a mesh free particle method for solving conservation law or solving partial differential equation. So, just, uh, so why, I just give you that uh, little bit uh, motivation why we solve the partial differential equation. So this is a numerical method, what we present. But uh, in the reality, so in the earlier days before the innovation of computer, modern computer, people has to solve all the problem by hand or with some experiment. So most of the real old problem are formulated as a partial differential equation, mostly partial differential equation, or some, but some can be also ordinary differential equation. So they are basically, most of the partial differential equation are the conservation laws. And so the traditional method for solving this equation was either do the practical or experimental, but the experimental approach can be very expensive. So you have to, to make a lab or Sometimes if you collect the data, the data can be inaccurate. So you may have to repeat several times your the experiment. So then it costs time as well as the money. And uh, so this is the one approach uh, people have used uh, the, in practice. So another one is theoretical approach. So in that case that theoret analytical approach, theoretical approach means finding the solution and analytically the, the analytical solution but that has also restriction that you may get the analytical solution for simplified model for simple geometry, but in the reality, real life problem that the geometry may be very complicated and the equation may be also very, uh, very complicated and highly nonlinear linear where you cannot find any analytical solution. So therefore, this was uh, the disadvantage with the classical method. But now the modern approach people use mostly the numerical or scientific computation or numerical simulation. So after innovation of computers or even now all the supercomputer, so people are using this traditional method. So as alternative as the scientific computing or numerical method. So then, so with this numerical computation, what we can do that we can replace all the expensive experiment we can replace by the numerical simulation. So we can repeat numerical simulation many times, just changing the parameter just on computer. So it doesn't cost no need to re-establish, uh, re restart the experimental preparation lab. So just do as many as uh, simulation you want, just by changing the input value in the computer. So in that sense, it is uh, more efficient and uh, cheaper on the both side. So if you look at the numerical method, the classical methods are like a finite difference method or the finite volume method or so finite element, finite volume or finite difference method. So these are the method they have some type of grid structure or they have the connectivity between grid, for example, if I am in the one dimensional case, so I am sitting at the grid I, then I will have my next grid I minus one or I plus one. If I have 2D, then I am sitting on the center, then I have the grid left, right, top and bottom. So I have always this type of connectivity. So there, this is like, it's called like a mesh, mesh method. But when we come to, to the mesh-free method, we do not have that connectivity, yeah? 
So why we need that mesh uh, free method? If one solves the problem which is a moving object, yeah? if the, the geometry is moving with time, and then what will happen that the mesh or grids, grids, uh, what you have generated, they can be destroyed. And then you may have to regenerate them at every time level. So regenerating the mesh means that it costs you the time, the computational time. It may not be more accurate because uh, you don't know if the geometry moves or how the geometry looks like. You cannot expect always nice uh, rectangular geometry or the cube type or sphere because the geometry can be all zigzag. So there, in that case, uh, or this uh, classical mesh base method are very, very uh, complicated or time consuming, sometimes very inaccurate. Or for example, if some geometry change very quickly, like, like nowadays in every car, what you have that uh, the every car has an airbag. If there is some accident, if the driver makes accident, so this airbag they have to blow up in certain millisecond so that it will save the life of the passenger or the driver. So for that case that to somehow to simulate in such a small, if in the, it is in the steering, you don't know how big is it, but it has been folded because once it is blowing up, so it is larger than the, of course, it has to protect the driver means it will be very big. So if it expands, so if it is a blow up, so it should blow up within certain milliseconds so that after accident, immediately the driver will be hit on by the, this uh, airbag. So many times what happened that this airbag also was not uh, correctly is blowing up or uh, so not on time or not completely. So instead of without having the airbag, people, the driver would have been saved, but due to the, the wrong inflation of the airbag, so there was also cases that driver have died. So therefore, in order to accurate that correctly, so then it is changing with the time. Therefore, you have very, very big difficulties using all the mesh uh, base method. So therefore, this the mesh free method can be as alternative of this part. Or if you have like a free surface flow, yeah, just like that uh, water wave, or you can see all dam break, whatever, floods. So there you have the free surface flow, the, this free surface move with the time, so it is changing the geometry or the interface between the air and the water. Or if you have multi-fluid flow mixing different type of immiscible, just uh, putting different immiscible flow simulation, so there you have the interface between two different fluids. So this interface you can, with the mesh free particle method, you can nicely, nicely separate. It's giving different flag of the particle, different color. So to find the interface is very easy. So for that case, the classical method could be very complicated. I don't tell that it is it fails, but it will be very time consuming and then sometimes it will be very inaccurate. So then uh, particle methods are therefore, they can be like an alternative to all classical methods to eliminate the need of grid connectivity. So the primary concept involves like a discrete point instead of cells or the regular points, we have the discrete points. So they can be irregular, they don't need to be ordered, they don't need to be connected. So they are known as the particles. So they are then in this case that it has the advantage that if the classical method fails, so it has it will be more easy. So it encounter lots of uh, difficulties they have. So it will uh, solve that type of uh, difficulties. So the the classical method of this is mesh free particle method is uh, the smooth particle hydrodynamics. It is. Uh, in the short form, it is called like SPS. So it was then uh, originally developed by the scientists uh, from the Australia, Monaghan or Lucy Gingold. Uh, so they applied first uh, the problem with the astrophysics uh, without geometry. And later they applied the same method with the lab, laboratories there where you have the geometry. So that case, a uh, little bit uh, 
somehow difficulties they had using the boundary condition because if you have a geometry, you need the boundary condition. So this uh, SPH, smooth particle hydrodynamics method is a fully Lagrangian particle method where the particle move with their velocity and they carry all the essential information with them. They carry their position, they carry their velocity, they carry their density, even the energy, pressure, temperature, everything what you need to simulate the flow. But in our case, we use a little bit different approach. We call it as a generalized finite difference approach. The idea comes from the finite difference approximation, but it has similar character like the SPH. So it here also the particle move with their velocity, but with computer derivative in the space is different than the SPH. So it is based on like a finite difference idea, and also our implementation of the boundary condition also differ from the SPH. So we call this method like a finite point set method. So in short form, I we call it as FPM. So this FPM we have been developing since last 25 years together with um, some colleagues in Fraunhofer Institute for Industrial Mathematics in Germany. So then after that we have applied in various of industrial problem. So we have solved that using uh, many industrial problem using this method. So there are some technical aspect that uh, so here so we have to well, even in SPS we have to establish the neighbor list for every particle. So if I am sitting in this particle, so I have to find a neighbor list. With the help of this neighbor list, I should approximate the space derivative. So then we have to do the particle management. What does it mean if the particle they move with the, with the time? So either they cluster at one point and then or they scatter from each other so that we don't have enough number of points in the domain. Therefore, we may have to add point or if they cluster together, we have to remove them so that we have more or less uh, uniformly distributed, not equally, but more or less uniformly distributed grid points or particle points, which is essential for the stabilizing the code. Then, so these are like a technical or geometrical problem. And so after resolving this problem, so one writes the PD into either Eulerian form or fully Lagrangian form or arbitrary Eulerian, Lagrangian Eulerian form called size ALE. And then after that, we get the right hand side, we approximate the derivative at every particle. And then we get a system of OD ordinary differential equation depending upon time. So once we get that, we solve this system of OD with any, um, any OD solver. So in this uh, series of lecture, I will cover the following. So I start first because uh, I will give you, maybe some of you already know that what is the conservation law is, but uh, I just uh, start uh, giving you the introduction so that those who do not have any idea, that you come to know what the conservation equation is because I'm going to solve this conservation law, this conservation equation. Therefore, I start with the derivation of conservation law. So some explore some fundamental principle behind this conservation laws. And then I give some examples so of this conservation laws. This I restrict myself in all these series in the one dimensional case. So I have the scalar equation. But also we may have, I come to the, uh, the system of equation, but it will be always in 1D. So there I will just uh, illustrate some real old example to solidify the understanding. And then once we have this characteristic equation, there is a classical method, there is analytical method to solve it. So this is just like a characteristics method. Uh, so these classical methods are helpful sometimes. Why? Because if you know the analytical solution, you develop your numerical scheme and you implement to the computer, so your numerical solution should match with the analytical solution. So that is the benchmark. That is just to verify that your numerical scheme is exact, is accurate, because you are comparing with the analytical solution. So that we do with, with this scalar equation, with the conservation equation, using the method of characteristics, where we get the, the analytical solution. And then I come to the some point. Uh, so I, I come how to do the moving least square interpolation or, uh, or reconstruction 
of a function using a moving least square method. So I, I just uh, show you the explore the application of moving least square function for function, the method for the function reconstruction. And then I show you how to compute the derivative because we are dealing with a partial differential equation. So it is depending upon time and space. So then I will show how to approximate the derivative in space with the, the, this uh, numerical methods. So then I will solve some partial differential equation. This is uh, then after that, I just uh, bring uh, some different uh, approach. So I start with some finite difference method. You already know it maybe. And then once I saw some solution with the finite difference method, and then I further go because our method is a generalized finite difference method. Then after that, I go to the generalized finite difference. And let me show you some of the animation here. What we can solve uh, using our uh, this mesh free method just to give you the motivation. So that I will not cover all the simulation because I will be restricting myself in 1D, but it is just giving you the, the idea what can be done using uh, this mesh free method. So I just show you some simple example. It is just like uh, the dam problem. So these are the numerical example here I show you that uh, this is just you have the, the, the dam when you remove the membrane. So here if you remove the membrane the water flows to this uh, this direction and finally it hits the wall and goes back and forth and finally it comes to the steady state so it doesn't move much. So then another one what you see this is like uh, the fountain problem uh, that uh, if we have Somewhere on the street, the manhole, if the, 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 there is heavy rain, the water is flowing through the, the canal, and then if it is overflow, it will come out the water that you see, or even in the park, you see the simulation of fountain flow. So here it is very simple, but this equation I have solved using the incompressible navier stoke equation. So with this particle method, you can very easily handle this uh, type of simulation here. Then another one that I show you, it's like uh, for the pedestrian model. So if we have the, this pedestrian here, so I have the room here. The pedestrian are sitting in this room and they have the, uh, the exit either left or right and then they will see the exit only this room and they follow that, uh-huh. This exit is my shortest path, so and then once they go to this, reach this room, then they see the another exit, and they go there, and once they reach this uh, room, they see this exit, so like that, they just go. It is uh, some problem, like an evacuation problem. So what happened that once they are going here, the suddenly the doors uh, close, then they have to come back, yeah? So let us start again. So initially, they are generating here, so once, so they are moving, so both sides, yeah, half, half, separated because the equal distance, but now the gate is closed. So then after that, this, if the gate is closed, so they have to come back. So they are coming back, so then they follow the others. And then once they are in this room, they'll exit to this exit point. Once they are here, they will exit to this exit point. So, but what will happen if I keep both door open? So this, if I keep both door open, then I have the situation. They will go, of course. If nothing, so they will just uh, go out. But earlier that the suddenly door was closed, so they have to come back. So there are also other applications what we can have, like if uh, there is a moving object between. So there are the pedestrian who are going from left to right, and there is there is a pedestrian who is there is a car which is coming right to left, and then they they, they just pass by, and then they, they interact each other. They do not collide. So then the, the car has to also stop, and then what you see that finally, so if there are little bit disturbance to the car, also to the pedestrian, and finally they go to the right direction. So once more.
So finally, there is to the right direction. So there is another one, for example, if there are in the traffic with the zebra cross, so there are cars and the pedestrian, for example, the pedestrian are coming from this uh, zebra cross from the top, from the, the uh, here is uh, like a top, and they go to exit is this point here, the below bottom line, and the car, they are going through this uh, one lane, and then this, let us see the interaction of, of the, the car and the, the pedestrian. So somehow, and after pedestrian has gone, the car can accelerate uh, to its destination. So once more, so here what you see that, uh, so what will happen now? So they, when the pedestrian is start, before they come to this car, the car do not uh, stop, they go with their own speed here. So once the pedestrian are coming down now, so now the car has to stop. And the pedestrian also, they avoid the car, so they do not, because they cannot uh, cross, they can go through the car, so they avoid the cars. And then you see finally, so once the pedestrian are gone here, and then the car, they go with their speed, yeah? So then they speed up. So here what has happened that, so in the beginning, the cars had equal distance, but when the pedestrian were crossing them, so then the car, the distance between the behind, this the car are already ahead, already gone out, but this distance between these cars are getting closer, so that is uh, like it makes the jam here. Because if you, there is a long lane, then further, then the, there will be the development of the jam. And then this is the scenario what uh, you see everyday life on the road. So here, but if you look the longer the lane, the longer are the cars, so then there will be the jam. Let us see another example what we have here. Again, with the boundary, it's uh, something like that. So let us see what will happen. So once uh, the people are crossing, then the car stop, and then after that they move. So once more, and then finally they go to their destination. This is just give you the motivation or example. So we have applied this type of pedestrian simulation when the corona started, we have uh, done uh, that, that with the, so here what I have that, so I have this geometry, it is uh, 100 meter by 50 meter. So there are the pedestrian who are just uh, initialized in this block here. And then there are, among them randomly I have selected uh, some, infected uh, pedestrian, so they have the virus, they can infect the others, and then, so it is very short time, they infect the others, but others get the virus, they are just exposed, but they do not, the exposed we cannot in, uh, infect others because they also should be infected and only they can affect the others, so in this case, this is a very short time. So here, let us see that if they move together longer, and then this, uh, then the, the, the people who are sitting longer with the infected, so they get, they caught the virus, and these blue points are the, the, the exposed one. So they have got the virus from this red pedestrian, yeah? So this type of simulation we can do using our method here. Let me run again. So now, so since they are staying longer with the infected people, so they are exposed, so they are getting more virus, and finally, after a certain time, they may be infected and they may infect to others pedestrian. So this is one scenario. If there are pedestrian, like what will happen? So even you may find that they are crossing each other, both directions people are walking. So in this case, so these people go to the left and another group come to the, another goes to the right, another come to the left. So here what you see that, here very less people, here more people infected compared to the earlier one. So earlier had only the less people, but uh, here is a more because other people are coming from this side. So then they, they have to, they've made some type of jam because they could not cross, because they do not collide each other. 
they avoid the collision using social force uh, rule and then here those people who are going with the infected they are getting more exposed more virus but those who are going, going to other direction they are getting very less because why it may be that it is effect that if somebody infected is moving and another the healthy person moves but their the interaction is very short it is very short time so within very short time you may not get the the virus therefore you have to, one has stays longer with the infected person only the 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 healthy person get virus so this is the effect what you you see here therefore the very less people were exposed here yeah so once more so we see this uh, types thing then let me show the 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 final final simulation that if there is some type of junction there is a small corridor so it is a blocked so what will happen of course the people come all together but they all cannot pass through because they they will not collide each other then it develops some type of weak jam here and this the other people will stay longer with the infected people and then because they have to cross the the the, the this uh, small narrow exit then more people get infected here so more and more people are infected so here you see compared to only the one direction or both direction if we put even in the one direction same number of infected people now due to the narrow exit more people get infected therefore if somebody design to avoid this thing maybe one should not make the very small exit so this is the the information what one can pass to the designer so this is a scenario there would, so this case due, due to this this small exit the many got the exposed so i am now i will i will make to the end of this talk the lecture then we do that in the continuum continuous one so let me make full screen mode so come to the conclusion of this uh, the beginning of introduction lecture so then uh, the numerical methods we discuss so here we have uh, somehow is mentioned about classical approach finite difference finite element or finite volume and then mesh free approach like spas and fpm and then so this mesh free for method offers versatile solution for tracking complex geometry so the fpm is our own unique so it has unique feature stands out as a valuable tool for handling boundary condition effectively and or solving all this complicated problem so i hope um, you will follow my lecture and then uh, you can uh, somehow produce the results what i will present so see you in uh, the coming forthcoming lectures so thank you very much